Hi, I'm Cody. I'm here to help you pass your general knowledge test at the DMV. This video touches on all the topics in Section 2, General Knowledge, of the Wisconsin DMV Manual that may end up being the answers to questions on the test. Only the key points are discussed in this video. If you're looking to obtain a Class A or a Class B permit, then you must study this section and successfully pass the general knowledge exam at your local DMV. Items highlighted in green are answers to questions that you'll probably see during your exam at the DMV. Let's get started. Why inspect? Safety for yourself and for other road users is the most important reason you inspect your vehicle. Federal and state laws require that drivers inspect their vehicles. Federal and state inspectors also may inspect your vehicles. If they judge the vehicle to be unsafe, they will put it out of service until it is fixed. Types of Vehicle Inspection Pre-trip, before driving your vehicle for the day. En route, as you're driving along the way. And post-trip, after the end of every driving shift is required to inspect your vehicle for malfunctions and fill out a DVIR, Driver Vehicle Inspection Report. What to look for? Tire problems. Too much or too little air pressure. Bad wear. You need at least 4 32nds inch tread depth in every major groove on front tires. You need 2 32nds inch on other tires. No fabric should show through the tread or sidewall. Cuts or other damage. Suspension system defects. Cracked or broken spring hangers. Missing or broken leaves in any leaf spring. If one-fourth or more are missing, it will put the vehicle out of service, but any defect could be dangerous. Leaking shock absorbers. And broken or missing torque rods or arms and U-bolts. What to look for? Exhaust system defects. Loose, broken, or missing exhaust pipes, mufflers, tailpipes, or vertical stacks. Loose, broken or missing mounting brackets, clamps, bolts or nuts. Exhaust system parts rubbing against fuel system parts, tires or other moving parts of the vehicle. And exhaust system parts that are leaking. Emergency equipment, look for. Fire extinguishers. Spare electrical fuses, unless equipped with circuit breakers. And warning devices for parked vehicles, three reflective warning triangles or at least six fusees or three liquid burning flares. Seven-step inspection method. Oil pressure should come up to normal within a minute or two of starting the vehicle. Idling pressure should be 5 to 20 psi. Operating pressure should be 35 to 75 psi. Test for hydraulic leaks. If the vehicle has hydraulic brakes, pump the brake pedal three times. Then apply firm pressure to the pedal and hold for five seconds. The pedal should not move. If it does, there may be a leak or other problem. Get it fixed before driving. Inspection during a trip. If you see, hear, smell or feel anything that might mean trouble, check it out. Must inspect the securement of the cargo within the first 50 miles of a trip. Every 150 miles or every 3 hours, whichever comes first, after. And every time you stop. After trip inspection and report. Driver vehicle inspection report, DVIR, must be filled out at the end of every working day should be checked at the start of every shift by any driver using the vehicle after another driver. It is part of the pre-trip process to check this report, along with inspecting the vehicle. Basic control of your vehicle. Safe operation of a commercial vehicle requires skill in accelerating, steering, stopping, backing safely, Fasten your seatbelt when on the road. And apply the parking brake when you leave your vehicle. 
Accelerating. Don't roll back when you start. If you have a manual transmission vehicle, partly engage the clutch before you take your right foot off the brake. Put on the parking brake whenever necessary to keep from rolling back. Release the parking brake only when you have applied enough engine power to keep from rolling back. Steering. Hold the steering wheel firmly with both hands. Hold them at a 9 and 3 position. Steering wheel could jerk out of your hands when hitting rough patches of road. Stopping. Push the brake pedal down gradually. The amount of brake pressure you need to stop the vehicle will depend on the speed of the vehicle and how quickly you need to stop. And control the pressure so the vehicle comes to a smooth, safe stop. Backing safely. Backing is always dangerous. Park so you can move forward. Back towards the driver's side, instead of the passenger, blind, side. Never back unless 100% necessary. Use a helper whenever you can. And you and the helper should agree on a signal for stop. Shifting gears. Two ways to know when to shift. RPM gauge, tachometer, speedometer, and the third way, sound. Special conditions where you should downshift are before starting down a hill or mountain and before entering a curve. Automatic transmissions Must manually shift automatic transmissions to a low gear before starting down a hill or mountain. If you do not set the gear manually before going down a mountain, speed will continue to get higher and higher until you are out of control. Retarders Some vehicles have retarders which help slow a vehicle, reducing the need for using your brakes. Reduce brake wear For basic types of retarders, exhaust, engine, hydraulic, electric can be turned on or off by the driver can be adjustable, prohibited in some locations, and never use on slick or icy roads, can cause skidding in bad weather. Seeing ahead. Need to see ahead so you have room to stop safely. Look 12 to 15 seconds ahead. In the city, that's about one block. On the highway, about a quarter mile. Look back and forth, near and far, scan the area ahead. Look for stopped traffic, signal lights, merging traffic, and hazards on the road. Seeing to the sides and rear. Proper mirror adjustment. Check every 5 to 8 seconds. Check quickly. Understand what you see. There are blind spots that even your mirrors can't show you. Plain mirrors show directly down the side of the vehicle. Convex mirrors show a broader area away from the vehicle. But everything seems smaller. And objects seem farther away than what they really are. Signal your intentions. Let others know what you are doing. Lane changes. Turns. Merging. Slowing down or stopping on the road, use four way emergency flashers. Turn them on early, 50 to 100 foot. Signal continuously. Turn off signals when done. Don't direct traffic. Communicating your presence. When passing. When stopping on the side of the road. You have 10 minutes to put out your warning devices. On a divided road. 10 foot behind the vehicle. 100 foot behind the vehicle. 200 foot behind the vehicle. On an undivided road. 10 foot behind the vehicle. 100 foot behind the vehicle. 100 foot in front of the vehicle. On a curve or a hill. 
10 foot behind the vehicle. 100 to 500 foot behind the vehicle. 100 foot in front of the vehicle. When putting out triangles, keep them between you and oncoming traffic. And use your horn when necessary, but be careful, it can startle other drivers. Controlling speed. Driving too fast is a major cause of fatal crashes. You must adjust your speed depending on driving. Conditions. Stopping distance. Three things add up to total stopping distance at 55 miles per hour. Perception distance. 142 foot. Reaction distance. 61 foot. Effective braking distance. 216 foot. We already know that there is a fourth item, brake lag which adds an additional 32 foot at 55 miles per hour. Total of 451 foot over the length of a football field. Empty trucks require greater stopping distances. Because they have less traction and double your speed, the impact is four times greater. Matching speed to the road surface. Wet roads double stopping distance. Identify as roads are getting slippery by. Roll down your window, wipe your hand across the front side of your mirror. If it's icy or slushy, roads are getting slick. Black ice is ice so thin, you can see the surface below it, very dangerous to drive on. Just after it rains, oil and fluids rise to the road surface, causing slick spots. And hydroplaning is when the tires lose contact with the road surface. Speed in curves. Drivers must adjust their speed on curves. Two things can happen. Tires keep their grip and truck rolls over, or the tires lose their grip and the truck slides off the curve. It's a lose, lose situation regardless. Slow to a safe speed before you enter a curve. Posted speed limits are almost always for cars, not trucks. And trucks should decrease speed by half or more from what is posted. Speed and distance ahead. Should be able to stop in the distance you can see ahead. Fog, rain, or other conditions may make it difficult to see. At night, can't see as far with low beams as you can high beams. Slow down if using low beams. Speed in traffic flow. The safest speed for your vehicle in heavy traffic is the speed of other traffic. Keep a safe following distance. Speed on downgrades. Never exceed the posted speed limit on a downgrade. Factors determining your speed. Total weight of the vehicle and cargo. Length of the grade. Steepness of the grade. Road conditions. Weather. Shift transmission to a low gear before starting down the hill. Never try to downshift when going down a mountain. And use the engine braking effect to help control speed. Roadway work zones. Speeding traffic is the number one cause of deaths in roadway work zones. Slow down. Use your brake lights or four-way flashers to warn drivers behind you if a worker is on or near the roadway. Observe posted speed limits. Space ahead. Most frequent cause of truck slash bus crashes is following too closely to the vehicle in front of you. Must keep one, one second of following distance for every 10, 10 feet of vehicle length and add an additional second if going over 40 miles per hour. To know how much space you have, when the vehicle in front of you passes a fixed object like a bridge or pole, start counting. When you reach the same spot, then you'll know how many seconds of space exists between the two of you. Increase your space accordingly. Space behind. You can't stop others from following you too closely, but you can. Stay to the right. Increase your following distance, allowing them more room to pass you. Do not. Brake check tailgaters. 
or speed up and avoid tricks with tail gutters. Space to the sides. Stay centered in your lane. Leave the area directly to your left or right open for making emergency maneuvers. And be especially careful when coming out of tunnels, strong winds can tip the truck over. Space overhead. Hazards overhead. Low bridges. Low tree branches. Low hanging power lines. Low awnings. The vehicle's weight can affect his height. Road surface repaving can make it unsafe to go under bridges. And uneven road surfaces can cause the vehicle to tilt. Space below. Raised railroad tracks can cause a vehicle with low underneath clearance to get stuck. Drainage ditches. High curbs or medians. And road construction. These trailers can get stuck on raised crossings. Low slung units, low boy, car carrier, moving van, possum belly livestock trailer. Single axle tractor pulling a long trailer with its landing gear set to accommodate a tandem axle tractor. If for any reason you get stuck on the tracks, get out of the vehicle and away from the tracks. Space for turns. Trailers will off track. Trailer tries to take a shorter route than the tractor did. Don't swing wide before a turn, turn wide as you complete the turn instead. On left turns, get to the center of the road before starting your turn. From a single turn lane, turn to the left closest lane to you. On a dual turn, always start the turn from the rightmost dual lane and follow that lane around, finishing in the same lane. When going through a roundabout, large trucks are expected to straddle both lanes when making a right turn, left turn, or through movement. The center of a roundabout is called the truck apron. It is in place to allow for the off-tracking of the trailer onto the apron when making left turns or through movements. Use them. Space needed to cross or enter traffic. Trucks have slow acceleration. The heavier the load, the slower you will accelerate and the more space and time you will need. You need a much larger gap to enter traffic or to cross an intersection than what a car would. Importance of seeing hazards. A hazard is any road condition or road user that is a possible danger. Seeing hazards lets you prepared. Hazards are Dog walkers Kids playing on the sidewalk next to the road Bicyclists Stopped cars who aren't parked Parked cars And cars backing out of driveways Don't let a hazard become an emergency, have a plan out. Move over laws. Move over laws have been enacted that require drivers to slow and change lanes when approaching a roadside incident. When approaching law enforcement or other emergency vehicles stopped on or near a roadway in Wisconsin and using flashing emergency lights, you must change lanes into another lane not next to the emergency vehicles or slow down significantly using your four way flashers. Hazardous roads. Work zones. Slow down. Use four ways to warn drivers behind you of others on the road. Drop offs. Uneven pavement makes it risky for larger vehicles. Foreign objects on the road. Don't run over any objects if you can avoid them. On ramps slash off ramps. Posted speed may not be safe for larger vehicles and trucks. Drivers who are hazards. Drivers with blocked vision. Delivery trucks. Parked cars. Stopped buses. Pedestrians slash bicyclists. Talkers. Children. Ice cream trucks. Distracted drivers. Disabled vehicles. Rubberneckers at a crash scene. Shoppers and confused drivers.
Drivers who drive at inconsistent speeds use their body movement as clues to what they may do next. You are in conflict when you need to change speed or direction to avoid hitting someone. Always have a plan. Make escape plans to minimize the conflicts around you. Leave yourself an out. Always be prepared to take actions based on your plans. And don't let a hazard become an emergency. Distracted driving. A driver distraction is anything that takes your attention away from driving. Two types of distractions. Physical. Which is anything that causes you to take your hands off the wheel such as changing the radio controls or picking up a dropped cell phone. And mental distractions such as daydreaming or worrying about personal issues. Cell or mobile phones and texting. Handheld phones are forbidden in all commercial vehicles. Texting and driving is forbidden in all commercial vehicles. Fines start at $1,100 and go up to $2,750 for both. Suspensions of your commercial driving privileges range from 30 days to 120 days for both. Must use a hands free device. And many companies have policies now forbidding phone use or texting at all in a CMV. Don't drive distracted. Change radio stations ahead of time. Make important phone calls before you start to drive. Turn off all communication devices. Review maps ahead of time. Clean or adjust your mirrors ahead of time. Avoid eating, drinking, or smoking. And don't engage in emotional or intense conversations with people while driving. Watch out for other distracted drivers. Vehicles that may drift over the lane divider lines or within their own lane. Vehicles traveling at inconsistent speeds. Drivers who are preoccupied with maps, food, cigarettes, cell phones, or other objects. Drivers who appear to be involved in conversations with their passengers. And be careful when passing other distracted drivers. Aggressive drivers and road rage. What is it? Aggressive driving is the act of operating a motor vehicle in a selfish, bold, or pushy manner without regard for the rights or safety of others, i.e., changing lanes frequently and abruptly without notice. Road rage is operating a motor vehicle with the intent of doing harm to others or physically assaulting a driver or their vehicle. Don't be an aggressive driver. Reduce stress before you drive. Pay full attention when driving. Be realistic about travel times. Give others the benefit of the doubt. Slow down, don't be in a hurry. Don't drive slowly in the left lane. Avoid any type of gestures that may insult other drivers. Be courteous. Letting someone go in front of you won't really slow you down. What you should do when confronted by an aggressive driver. Don't confront an aggressive driver. Call the authorities if you are being harassed. Get out of their way. Put your pride in the back seat. Avoid eye contact. If they are involved in a crash, stop a safe distance away and wait for the authorities to give details about their driving habits. Night driving and driver fatigue. You are at greater risk when you drive at night. Drivers can't see hazards as soon as in daylight, so they have less time to respond. You only have 60% vision at night. The problems of night driving involve the driver, the roadway, and the vehicle. Driver factors Vision If you need glasses or contacts, always wear them when driving, it's illegal if you don't. Keep an extra set of corrective lenses in your vehicle. If your normal corrective lenses are broken or lost, you can use the spare lenses to drive safely. And glare. 
Look at the right side of the road momentarily until the glare has passed. Driver factors. Fatigue. Sets in after long work hours or working multiple days without a break. Makes the driver drowsy or sleepy. Causes metal miscues, like misjudging speed or distance. 15% of all crashes involved fatigued drivers. Gets less than 6 hours of sleep nightly. Only cure for fatigue is sleep. Even a 20-minute power nap can revive you. Warning signs of fatigue. Drowsiness. Falling asleep. Head nodding. Yawning. Unable to get comfortable sitting. Rubbing your eyes constantly. Difficulty focusing. Daydreaming, wandering thoughts. And drifting in your lane. How to avoid fatigue. Get at least 8 to 10 hours of sleep nightly. Stop and take breaks along your route. Plan trips during daylight hours. Minimize caffeine intake. Avoid heavy foods. Avoid medication that may make you drowsy, important. And keep cool. Roadway factors. Poor lighting. Drive slower when lighting is poor or confusing. Many roads are very poorly lit. Be on the lookout for drunk drivers when driving at night. Watch for drivers drifting in their lane or driving at inconsistent speeds. And turn on your high beams when legal to do so. Vehicle factors. Headlights. Make sure your headlights are clean and not glazed over. Make sure all your other light, such as marker, turn signal, and taillights are working, clean and visible. And the windshield and mirrors should be clean. Night driving procedures. Low beams only show 150 to 250 foot ahead of your vehicle. High beams show 350 to 500 foot. Use high beams whenever you can. Must dim high beams within 500 feet of an approaching vehicle or when you approach a vehicle from behind. Don't let the inside of your cab get too bright. And if you get sleepy, stop. And go to sleep. Driving in fog. Best advice is Don T. Fog can occur anytime, anywhere. Use low beams. Turn on all lights and your four way flashers. Roll your window down, listen for traffic you cannot see. Blow your air horn from time to time. Don't stop unnecessarily. Don't follow the lights in front of you. Use roadside markers to help stay in your lane. And stop when safe to do so. Driving in winter. Vehicle checks. Check oil and coolant. Check washer fluid and add washer fluid antifreeze if necessary. Make sure all steps, decks, and handhold are clear of any ice. Make sure tires have appropriate thickness of tread. Have tire chains available if needed and know how to use. Keep all lights clean and free from snow or ice. Use winter covers over the grill. And remove ice from the radiator. Slippery surfaces. Start smoothly and gently. Adjust braking and turning to conditions. Check for ice. Adjust speed to conditions. And adjust space to conditions. Driving in water. Wet brakes double your stopping distance. Avoid driving through puddles, however if you need to, then follow these steps. Use lower gear. Use two feet. Press the brake pedal and pat against the drum lightly with one foot while pressing the accelerator with the other foot. Drive through the water. When out of the water, press the brake pedal hard for 2-3 to three seconds to create friction and heat to dry off pads and drums. 
and then do a couple of normal stops to make sure brakes are working properly. Railroad and Highway Crossings There are two types of crossings. Active crossings have bells, flashing lights, gates. They have yellow circular signs, crossbuck signs, and pavement markings. Passive crossings, usually no train horn, have yellow circular signs, crossbuck signs, and pavement markings. You must stop 15 to 50 foot from the nearest rail. And remember, low slung units such as car haulers, livestock trailers, low boys, can get stuck on raised crossings. Mountain driving. No shifting once you've started down a mountain. Drivers of modern trucks may have to use lower gears going down a hill than would be required to go up the hill. And be in proper gear before starting down, usually one gear lower than you used to climb the mountain. Brake fading or failure. Brakes can fade or fail from excessive heat caused by using them too much and not relying on the engine braking effect. Brake fade is also affected by adjustment. And you know your brakes are starting to fade when you must press harder and harder on the pedal to get the same braking effect as when they were cold. Proper braking technique. Pick a safe speed. Once you start down, when speed builds up to your safe speed, press and hold the brake firmly for 2 to 3 seconds, about a 5 miles per hour drop in speed. Repeat as many times as necessary going down. Remember, the brake pedal is only a supplement to the braking effect of the engine. Escape ramps save lives, equipment and cargo. Use them if you lose your brakes. And any type of vehicle can use an escape ramp, not just trucks. Steering to avoid a crash. Stopping is not always the safest thing due to an emergency. You can almost always turn to miss an obstacle more quickly than you can stop. How to turn quickly and safely. Keep both hands on the wheel. Don't turn more than needed. Don't brake while turning. Be prepared to counter steer. And keep one set of tires on the pavement if possible. Steering to avoid a crash continued. Always steer to the right. Avoid braking. If possible, avoid using the brakes until your speed has dropped to about 20 miles per hour. Then brake very gently to avoid skidding on a loose surface. Keep one set of wheels on the pavement if possible. This helps to maintain control. Stay on the shoulder. If the shoulder is clear, stay on it until your vehicle has come to a stop. Signal and check your mirrors before pulling back onto the road. If the shoulder is not clear, hold the wheel tightly. Turn sharply enough to get right back on the road safely. Don't try to edge gradually back on the road. If you do, your tires might grab unexpectedly and you could lose control. And when both front tires are on the paved surface, counter steer immediately. The two turns should be made as a single steer. Counter steer movement. Anti lock braking systems, 8BS. Prevents wheel lock up. Truck tractors built on or after March 1, 1997, and trailers, buses, and converter dollies built on or after March 1, 1998, are required to have 8BS. On tractors and trucks, yellow light on the dashboard indicates the wheel says ABES. On trailers equipped with ABES, there is usually a round, yellow light at the end of the trailer on the driver's side. Even if the ABS fails, you still have normal brake functions. And you use ABS by using a firm steady press of the brake pedal. Skid control and recovery. Skids are caused by over-braking, corrected by getting off the brake, over-steering, over accelerating. Corrected by getting off the gas pedal. Driving too fast for conditions. Correcting by slowing down. You correct a drive while braking skid by getting off the brake. 
and steer, counter steer to regain control. And front wheel skid stop by regaining traction or hitting an object. Crash procedures. Protect the area. If involved in the crash, pull to the side of the road. Park away from the crash scene. Put out your reflective triangles. Turn on your four way flashers. Notify the authorities. Call 911 before exiting the vehicle. Care for the injured. Keep them warm to avoid shock. Don't move an injured person unless 100% necessary. And give first aid if needed. Fires Caused by Spilled fuel Electrical short circuits Improper fueling procedures Cargo Park away from populated areas Stay as far away as possible, aim at the base of the fire. Use the PASS method. An attendant BC fire extinguisher is required. Tire fires are caused by underinflated tires and dual tires that touch. Alcohol, other drugs, and driving. Drinking, using drugs, and driving don't mix. Alcohol first affects your judgment and self control. All these have the same amount of alcohol. A 12 ounce glass of 5% beer, a 5 ounce glass of 12% wine, and a 1.5 ounce shot of 80 proof liquor. B A C Blood alcohol concentration is determined by how much you drank, how fast you drank, and your weight. Only time can sober a person up. Other drugs Even legally prescribed medication can make it illegal for you to drive. No narcotic drugs. No marijuana. No upper or downers. No pep pills. And over-the-counter medication can make it unsafe for you to drive. Check your pill bottles for warning labels. Do not operate heavy equipment under the influence of this medication or may make you drowsy or sleepy. Illness Simple as this. You cannot drive if you are sick. No one can force you to drive with an illness. And it's illegal for you to drive ill. Hazardous Materials Rules Regardless of a driver hauling hazmat or not, all drivers must undergo basic hazmat training. What is hazmat? Hazardous materials are products that pose a risk to health, safety and property during transportation. There are nine different classes of hazardous materials. Class 1 – Explosives Class 2 – Gases Class 3 – Flammables Class 4, flammable solids. Class 5, oxidizers. Class 6, poisons. Class 7, radioactive. Class 8, corrosives. And Class 9, miscellaneous hazmat. There is a special class designated as ORTMD, otherwise regulated material, domestic, consumer commodities. Why are there rules? to contain the product. Rules tell shippers how to package the product for shipment. To accommodate the risk. Shippers use shipping papers. Shippers use diamond-shaped labels on the products to communicate the risk. Shipping papers must be kept within reach while being transported in the driver's side door pouch or on the driver's seat when out of the vehicle. And to ensure safe drivers and equipment. Lists of regulated products. Placards are used to warn others of the danger. Placards are a 10 inch square, turned up on a diamond shaped point. Placards are placed on all four sides of the vehicle. They may have the UN 
United Nations, or N.A. North America, numbers marked on them. Shippers are responsible to give the driver the correct placards for their load. Always ask for extras. Shippers must sign the shipper's certification on the bill of lading, B.O.L. For a driver to transport hazmat in a vehicle requiring placards, they must have the H endorsement on their license. Never transport a load of hazardous materials requiring placards without a H endorsement. And if the load is considered hazardous materials, but does not require placards to be placed on the trailer, then NOH endorsement is needed on your driver's license. That's it for the general knowledge portion of the DMV manual. However, there will be questions about cargo securement on your general knowledge exam. For that reason, the next few slides cover Section 3, Cargo Securement from the Wisconsin DMV Manual. Items highlighted in green are answers to questions that you'll probably see during your exam at the DMV. Let's get started. Inspecting Cargo You must check your cargo securement. After starting, within the first 50 miles. Check every 3 hours or 150 miles, whichever comes first. And every time you stop. Weight and balance. Definitions you should know. G, V, W, R. The maximum weight a single vehicle can weigh fully laden. G, C, W, R. The maximum weight two units combined can weigh fully laden. Legal weight limits. States dictate their roads legal weight limits. Bridge formula. Permits less maximum axle weight for axles that are closer together. Overloaded trucks can have bad effects on steering, braking, and speed control. It may not be safe to operate even at legal weight limits in mountains or in bad weather. Don't be top-heavy. A high center of gravity, cargo piled up high or heavy cargo on top, means you are more likely to tip over. Most dangerous in curves or if you must swerve to avoid a hazard. It is very important to distribute the cargo so it is as low as possible. And put the heaviest parts of the cargo under the lightest parts. Balance the weight. Poor weight balance can make vehicle handling unsafe. Too much weight on the steering axle can cause hard steering. It can damage the steering axle and tires. Underloaded front axles, caused by shifting weight too far to the rear, can make the steering axle weight too light to steer safely. Too little weight on the driving axles can cause poor traction. Blocking and bracing. Blocking is used in the front, back, and or sides of a piece of cargo to keep it from sliding. Blocking is shaped to fit snugly against cargo. It is secured to the cargo deck to prevent cargo movement. Bracing is also used to prevent movement of cargo. Bracing goes from the upper part of the cargo to the floor and or walls of the cargo compartment. Cargo tight owns. No matter the size, the minimum number of tight owns on any piece of cargo is 2. 1, 1, tie down for every 10 feet of cargo length. The aggregate working load limit of any securement system used to secure an article or group of articles against movement must be at least one half, one and a half, times the weight of the article or group of articles. Securement devices must be of the proper strength and type. Header boards Front end header boards, headache racks, protect you from your cargo in case of a crash or emergency stop. Make sure the front end structure is in good condition. The front end structure should block the forward movement of any cargo you carry. Covering cargo. There are two basic reasons for covering cargo. To protect people from spilled cargo. And to protect the cargo from weather. Many states have laws regarding covering your cargo. Sealed and containerized loads. Containerized loads generally are used when freight is carried partway by rail or ship. 
Some containers have their own tie-down devices or locks that attach directly to a special frame. You cannot inspect sealed loads, but you should check that you don't exceed gross weight and axle weight limits. Cargo needing special attention. All these types of cargo have a high center of gravity. Be careful and slow down going around curves or making turns. Dry bulk tanks. Hanging meat can swing on turns or curves. Livestock can move around if there are no false bulkheads. Oversized loads. Need red flags during the day and at night they need to have red lights attached. Also, they may need special permits. That will bring our information section on general knowledge and cargo securement to a finish. Watch this video and study the Wisconsin DMV manual before attempting your exam at the DMV. Good luck!